In my last video, I talked about the differences between warping a loom front to back versus back to front. One of the biggest factors that I mentioned is how the shape, size, and structure of a loom can affect your posture while you're warping. This is huge since warping is a very time-consuming part of the process and you want to be able to complete it without injuring yourself. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the different looms that I have here in my studio and why I prefer warping each one the way that I do. As always, if this video is helpful to you, be sure to like and comment below. It really does help us get more videos out to you. So first up on this tour is this loom right here. It is a Leclerc 45 inch eight shaft floor loom. It is a jack loom and I prefer to warp this loom front to back. I'm going to bring you around to the loom so that I can show you why I choose to warp it that way and what I would need to do to modify it to warp it back to front in a comfortable enough manner. So let's get going. So we are here at the back of the Leclerc floor loom and the reason why I like to warp this loom front to back is primarily because of the way that the back beam folds up so easily. So I can lift this bar on both sides of the loom and then bring this back beam forward and compress that space that's at the back of the loom. Then I will remove the warp beam from the loom, which is fairly easy to do. It's just held in there with some um, metal bars that are held in with wing nuts. And then, so this whole thing will be out of my way. It'll be compressed forward and I can also remove this beam right here very easily when there's not a warp on it. And then I can sit on a stool. This is one that I use. It's the right height and I keep it with the loom. I'll sit on the stool and then the heddles will be exactly at my eye level. I don't have to stoop over or hunch or anything and I can thread the loom quite comfortably from that position. Now we are at the front of the Leclerc floor loom. When I thread the heddles from the seated position at the bench, I often find myself hunched over very uncomfortably to be able to see the heddles and where they are and which one I'm choosing. So you can see this posture, it's not very healthy and it's not very comfortable for a long period of time. So I need to, if I'm going to warp back to front and be pulling the heddles or the, the warp ends through the heddles from this direction, I need to find a different position to do that from. So let's talk about what that would look like. So we're now at the front of the Leclerc floor loom and I'm here to show you what I would need to take off or move to warp comfortably back to front. I would first need to take off the beater, which is quite heavy and a little bit cumbersome to take off and put back on. And then I would take off this breast beam, which is actually quite easy to take off. Uh, so it's the same as the back. I would take off the cloth beam, which is about the same effort to put on and take off as the back. But then we get to the treadles and these are fairly fixed. I would have to get up under the loom to remove them. So that's not really an option. I wouldn't have them tied up the way that I have this is now. A four shaft and so I would be sitting on those and that JL is Hannah very in the 1930s. So what I do I actually is I'm very comfortable these warping boards. this loom back to and front, I lay them across, even though it is a larger loom, boards, and as you can see, it's relatively back. easy for and me to even climb that, into the loom and add a stool and get into and as great of a posture so as at the, the back structure of the loom, the, loom, the way that your own posture there to have a good posture. So that is why I choose to warp this loom front to back on most occasions is just that it's easier to get a good posture, it's more comfortable to get a good posture at the back of the loom.
The next loom that I have to share with you is this Slouette. It's technically a table loom, but is up on a stand. And I have only ever warped this loom back to front. It seems to be designed to be warped that way. There's this hand handy place to store the rattle, and you could also tie it anywhere that makes sense to you as you're warping the loom. I mentioned that this is a table loom. One of the really nice things about table looms is that you can put them on a table if you don't have a stand and raise them up on books or lower it on a stool or, or whatever combination of things you can do to get it exactly at the level so that you're not hunched over as you're warping the loom. So that is a handy tip for smaller looms. You can make the loom be at the right height for you rather than moving yourself around to be at the right height for the loom. This loom is the Cricut Quartet. At this point, I have done an extensive set of videos on warping this loom, and I showed you warping back to front on this loom because I just wanted to see how it would work. Um, so I have done it back to front, but I do suspect that this loom was designed to be warped front to back. There just really wasn't a good place to put a rattle, and it was actually kind of cumbersome to warp it back to front. As with all table looms, like this loom, you can take it off whatever stand you might have, put it on a table, lift it up on some books, do whatever it takes to modify the loom to suit your posture. Right now I'm sitting on a stool so that I can get the loom entirely in the frame along with my face, but I noticed that this also puts me at a really nice level to see the heddles without having to hunch over. Remember, you never want to be hunched over, you always want to have good posture so that you can work without pain. The last loom I have to share with you is this two-shaft Saori counterbalance loom. This loom is actually a little bit of an oddball with warping because there are so many different ways that you can warp it. It's designed to be entirely modular, which means that you can buy a pre-wound warp roll. It comes on a cardboard roll with the paper separators, and you just put it on the back beam, and then you bring the warp up and over, thread it through the heddles, then thread it through the reed, get it attached to the front beam, and then you can just start weaving. So that would be warping it back to front. I've also warped it front to back fairly easily. The only challenge is that the warp beam is all the way at the bottom. So it becomes difficult to roll that, and there's no crank. So that is an argument against warping it front to back. However, I have talked to some people who put this loom up on a table. It's very lightweight, easy to move around. So they'll put it up on a table and then they can turn the bottom beam, that, that back warp beam, from a comfortable height once the loom is set up on a table. But it gets even better. There's more that you can do with warping this loom. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute. This is the tabletop warping system that's designed to be used with the Saori loom. And it is really ingenious because it is part of this modular system that lets you have total control over how you set up your warp. So the first thing that you'll do is that you'll put one of these cardboard paper tubes, square tubes, onto this back beam. I've already got one there. And this just hooks on and off. There's a button over here that will let you take it off. And then you will use your rattle and you can see that there are pegs that the rattle fits right into. And you can wind your warp onto the back beam right through that rattle. So it's nice and evenly spaced. Then what's, once that's complete, you can put your shafts into these holes right here and thread your heddles and then you will take the top of your beater off of the loom and put it onto this spot and you'll put whatever reed you're using into that and that's groove. everything. I hope this video has and helped you to better understand the read. some of the reasons you might choose this one warping method over the other. Front if you have questions, feel free to drop ways, a comment it's really below. Designed if you to enjoyed be this video, be sure to and like and subscribe. And then once everything's done, Thanks you'll so much have for watching. your heddles, I'll catch you in the next video. your reed threaded, and your warp wound on. You just take it all off. Um, you tie it together so that it doesn't fall apart. You take it all off and you take it over to the loom and it hooks onto the loom in five minutes. It's very easy, very comfortable to warp. It is really a very
ingenious solution to the struggle of warping balloon.